Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Bad Flower. How's it going, y'all? So good. How are so you? Good. So good. We're here at Earth Day Birthday. Uh, you just wrapped up your set, like what, 20 minutes ago or so? 20 seconds Ish. Ago. 20 seconds. We'll say 20 seconds just for the sake of the camera. How was it today? Good? Great, it was hot, but good. Yeah, I mean, you're in Florida, yeah. so you can't really expect anything less, right? Right, <laughs> correct. Absolutely, and let's talk a little bit about music here, because I'm so enthralled by your album, I'm OK, I'm Sick. Like, it's phenomenal, and I think raises a lot of really interesting conversations that we'll get into. Um, but one thing that I noticed you said in another interview was that this you wanted to create an album that solely represented this generation. Yeah. So what characteristics of it, for anyone who hasn't heard it, do you think make it an all-encompassing album for our generation? Well, lyrically, we talk about things that are relevant to today. Um, comparatively, a lot of new rock bands and new rock writers are trying to, like, keep this vintage image, like talking about things that are old or cool. Like talking about telephones rather than iPhones. Like we use iPhones. Yeah. We don't. You know what I mean? Like, what's another example of that? Yeah, we talk about <laughs> books and like, like, dude, I I wrote all the lyrics in my notes app on my phone. Right. Like, we're just trying to not um, pretend like we're living in some different right. generation. Like trying you know? to make it more poetic, even though it's not yeah. realistic. I yeah, think. exactly right. And you can make current modern things and modern real world things poetic still. Yeah. Um, if need be. Yeah, I think you guys are a fair example that it's definitely possible. Yeah, well, thank you so much. That that was <laughs> yeah. the attempt. Yeah, not trying to boost your egos even further, but I got to be honest here. Oh, um, <laughs> That's our fuel. That's what keeps us going. Cool. Then I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> and another thing that I I thought was really interesting the first time I heard the album title, "Okay, I'm Sick," before even listening to it is I was a little bit concerned because I think there's a bit of a conversation of a lot of artists that capitalize on the struggles of other people for the sake of being relevant or relatable to sell. And I know that's not the case with you guys, but what are your thoughts on that issue? Because it is something that some artists are guilty of. And how do you find a balance of making sure that the conversations on your album are authentic and don't come off that way? We just don't try. We just write whatever feels right for us in that moment and we don't think about how people are gonna respond or react ever. Right. Um, until like five days before the release of the album and then we start freaking out. <laughs> like, oh, people are actually going to hear this. Uh-oh. Right. I hope this goes over well. Yeah, so would you say you write more for you guys and for your own therapeutic and artistic desires, if you will? Yes, exactly right. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And another thing is your song Ghost has done wildly well on the radio, which is why you are playing a radio show today here with 101.1. Um, so why, what do you think is like the key to success for a rock band to make it on the radio? Because I think that's something that a lot of people find very difficult to do. And why do you think the radio is still important in today's climate of the music industry? I mean, the, the honest answer is the key to success writing a good radio song is to follow the formula that works. Yeah. Um, the key to being a successful group and staying happy and staying authentic is to not follow those formulas, <laughs> do what feels right, and hope that the radio decides to play it. Right. Just write something good. Write something good that's that's authentic and important to you and follow some kind of a structure so it's not boring. Right. <laughs> and then uh, and, and hope for the best, yeah. Yeah. And with Spotify and all these streaming sites and whatnot, do you think radio is still important for bands to focus on in their career? I don't think it will be for very much longer. Yeah. I, we, it's The radio has been nothing but amazing to us. Like, right. it really has launched our careers. So I don't want to yeah. say anything negative about... So you're in an interesting position. I know. I don't want to say anything negative about... But I think even radio people know that there's a shift happening. And it's kind of an old discovery method. It's still the biggest discovery method of music. Uh -huh. But I, I think... Uh, I don't know how much longer it'll last. Yeah. That's just the truth of it, yeah. yeah. And I guess just a fun question for you guys. What is your favorite radio, like rock radio song? Do you guys have like a guilty pleasure one or anything like that? Let's go down the line. I just want to hear from all of you. What's the one when it comes on? It's the jam. Oh, do you know what I'm liking lately is the Glorious Sons are actually playing today. Sawed Off Shotgun. Mm -hmm. That song rules. You know that one? Yeah, I got my dance man. I got my hair I got my hook dog. You know? It's a bop. It's a bop. It's good. <laughs> Just trust me. <laughs> it's a bop. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to be hip with the kids. Is it working? <laughs> I don't know. We're not kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go find some kids in the crowd later. We'll figure it out. And one song that I thought was such a huge standout that personally I really resonated with was Murder Games, which really discusses the horrors of the meatpacking industry. And 
really gets into detail, the nitty gritty of it all. So what action are you hoping that listeners are going to take after hearing that, especially for anybody who maybe has never been educated on that? That industry. I hope that it's eye-opening to some degree, and they decide to dig deeper into that issue. I, yeah. I think it's not it's not something that's being talked about enough. I mean, the vegan population of the world is growing very, very fast, yeah. and we just hope to be some sort of part of shedding a light on the abuse of animals. Yeah. And why, for you guys, was that such an important topic to discuss? I imagine you're vegan. I'm um, vegan. But yeah. Yeah, the whole group isn't vegan, but um, okay. but everybody's like very aware and very okay. conscious of these things okay. happening. It would be impossible to be in a band with me and not be aware. <laughs> because so you're vocal. I'm very vocal about it. And I, I just feel like it's, rather than just writing cool rock riffs and rock songs and then talking about the activism stuff on social media, why not actually put it in the music? And yeah. it felt important to us to put that out, yeah. I think this might be the first song that I've heard that addresses it in music. Like, it's normally just you get a pamphlet or you yeah. see an well, activist outside. Morrissey's done it. There's been a couple of others who, yeah. have, who have done it. But I, I think ours is the angriest. It's, it's angsty. <laughs> yeah. So I take pride in that. Like, we have the angriest <laughs> animal rights song there is. Try to top it. We dare you. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible. It's pretty. It's pretty out there. Um, and something that I also read in a previous interview was that you compared the process of releasing new music to giving birth, which was quite a fascinating one. Of just sort of how your relationship changes with the music from when you're working on it to when it's released to the public. So now that you've had a few months to play these songs live, how has your perspective of the album changed? Just seeing the fans' reactions. Well, we've actually retracted that statement and shifted oh. it a little bit. Okay. It's giving birth is like. Uh, writing the songs. Okay. The writing the writing process is like is like the labor and then the giving birth. I see. The release day is like 18 years later you send it off to college and you never hear from it again and it never calls you. And it's just not it's you don't you can't claim ownership over it anymore. Now people get to take it and do whatever they want with it. Yeah. Interesting. And it feels like people aren't abusing the privilege of having our babies out the world. <laughs> they seem to appreciate and respect what we've created and it's Good. wonderful. Good. And having so many really personal and really intense topics on this album, do you find it difficult to be reliving these emotions every night on stage? Yeah. yeah. I imagine that gets pretty exhausting. Yeah, because I'm like in therapy trying to get over my anxiety issues and all that and then here I am like half of the set is about panicking yeah. it's tough but yeah I also think that's important too like if I can be a figure and sort of inspiring people that even with debilitating panic disorder I can go up on stage in front yeah. of tens of thousands of people and still perform and still have this life that I want I think it's important people t for people to know that it's possible that anything's possible yeah I mean you're definitely helping a lot of people and setting a great example so it could be therapeutic in different ways than the traditional method of therapy right. yeah yeah, yeah. And so how about you guys? How are you feeling playing these songs live? How's it been for you guys? It's been a blast. I don't You've know. You've been so quiet over there. <laughs> but good. Yeah, they're fun. Fair, fair. And so we are here. <laughs> I'll take it. You're having fun. Play, I don't think I'd be in the band, so, you know. Okay, that's about, that sounds like an ultimatum. Keep making fun songs. Helps, you know, so. Yeah, keep and making fun songs. And everybody, everybody feels that, like, you know, when we play Ghost Live and there's a real emotional connection being made with people like even though Alex and Anthony may not struggle with the same sort of like they might not might not have panic attacks before they go on stage and Danny also sorry I didn't mean to include you um, you still feel that like this really incredible energy and there's a lot of shows that have brought all of us to tears just by that reaction it's so, powerful. so it's yeah it's really really it's fun to play the songs some of them are just fun and angsty and stupid and others are really special and emotional and, and uh, it's a fulfilling job that we have Absolutely. And you are playing Earth Day Birthday today. What else are the upcoming plans that fans can look forward to for the next few months? Yeah, we have a headlining tour coming up, a very short one. Um, it's only like 10 days, I think, in like mid-America. And yeah. then uh, we're going on tour with Shinedown. Amazing. That'll and be great. And I know great. you're doing the big festivals. I know you're doing Rockville for sure. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot of festivals, I think, in between those headlining shows. Sweet. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. It was great talking to you. Yeah, yeah, and everybody watching, make sure you subscribe for more videos. Check out their album, OK, I'm Sick, and we'll see you next time. Bye.